Greetings, paranormalists! I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Now, what can you say about Hellboy? Well, let's take a look at his history first. Created sometime in the early 1990s by Mike Mignola, Hellboy comics are a mix of pulp magazine, monster horror, and old-fashioned far-flung adventure. After a string of one-shots and limited runs, Hellboy made the leap to the big screen in 2004. Based on the story Seeds of Destruction, the movie and its 2008 sequel were directed by Guillermo del Toro. So lock and load because we're diving into the world of the weird with Hellboy, the movie. Somewhere off the coast of Scotland in 1944, Desperate Nazi occultists are working with Rasputin to open a portal to the realm of the Ogdru Jihad. Luckily, a well-timed grenade from a US soldier puts paid to their portal device, and Rasputin is sucked to his doom. Ooh, nasty. But the portal was open for too long, and something else came through. Thus, behold Anungun Rama though the world shall know him by another name, Hellboy. We then move to the present day, where a trio of explorers uncover ancient ruins in the mountains of Moldavia. But oh dear. Yes, this poor sap is drained of his blood to resurrect Rasputin, which we're skipping because blood. We meet the newest member of the BPRD, John T. Myers, and the rest of the family. Being Abe Sapien, Professor Broom, no relation, and Agent Clay, and of course, the man himself. But the introductions are cut short when a code red is sounded. Hellboy and Abe are dispatched to investigate. Hellboy chances upon a Samael, feasting on the remains of a security guard. Oh, oh crap. During a lull in the fighting, Hellboy comes across a vision of Rasputin. Personally, I'd prefer a vegan of that blonde helper of his. <laughs> yes, I can only apologise for my former self. I don't know what I was thinking. Our hero pursues the beast across the city and into the subway. Would it be terribly cliche of me to say shocking? Yes, it would be rather cliche actually, but I'm going to allow it anyway. But oh dear because for each Samael that falls, two more shall take its place. Hellboy goes walkabout, and we meet our last team member. Elizabeth Sherman, Pyrokinetic. Portrayed with suitable gravitas here by Selma Blair. Sherman is learning to control her powers, but she's still got a ways to go yet. We find out that Samael has laid its foul eggs in Hellboy's wound. Hellboy and Abe look for Samael eggs in the subway. But oh dear. That little trinket was a reliquary, direct from the Vatican. Meant to protect Abe from the attentions of the Samael. Without it, he's got a fight on his hands. Things aren't much better up top and the fight spills out into public, until Red takes charge. This Samael didn't reckon with an oncoming train. Ooh, nasty. Abe barely escapes with his life and is rushed back to the Bureau. Director Manning blames our heroes for these unexpected events, eliciting this response. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Home sweet home. Sherman's return to the BPRD is just another step in Rasputin's plan. We then witness an autopsy. Subject, Karl Ruprecht Cronin. Karl Ruprecht Cronin. Surgical addict, clockwork soldier, minion of Rasputin. But Cronin isn't completely dead. All of which acts as a prelude to a visit from Rasputin, and the final moments of Professor Broom. Ladies and gentlemen, a moment for Professor Broom.
Blimey, this is getting a bit morbid, isn't it? Anyway, onward! And where is Hellboy in all of this? Spying on Liz's date with Myers. Based on a clue from a scrap of paper, the team head to Russia. The mausoleum expedition does not go well, but our hero does get the chance to avenge the professor. Myers and Liz find the Samael spawning cave. And even when Hellboy breaks through, there are too many for him to handle. There's only one thing to do. And after all that, we finally reach the mausoleum of Rasputin. Rasputin uses Sherman's soul as a bargaining chip, forcing Hellboy to utter his true name and summon chaos. But Myers still carries Professor Broom's cross, bringing HB back to his senses, and our hero stabs Russia's greatest love machine. But with the end of Rasputin, something altogether nastier is released. And so, Hellboy fights the behemoth, dropping a belt of grenades in its belly. But what about Liz? Our hero threatens that he'll cross over and retrieve her soul himself if they don't give it back. So they do. And so our movie ends with the two lovers in embrace. So that was Hellboy. And yes, it was a good movie. But I can't put it into the House of Love. Sure, it's visceral and actiony. Yeah, it's got the conceit of monsters versus monsters. But it's so tightly packed and it demands your attention. I mean, if later films have sequelitis, this movie has originitis. Tries to set up too many characters, most of whom end up dead anyway. And the CGI is especially ropey. Still, for all its faults, it's a big crazy celebration of Mignola's pulp character, and a great place to start for anyone that wants to get into Hellboy. So thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon for more fun and frolics. Keep watching the skies!